Listen, Rodrigo, women like to be badly treated and plagued. They like to be angered and ignored. It's easy. They're red-blooded and passionate and like to be spoiled rotten. But they also like kissing. And then they like to do it again. And then see what happens. And you've lost the race before you've got to the start line. I want you to be careful because if you lose this race, please know I'm in trouble as well. Because Jorge de la Rosa may end up falling in love with Maria de Los Angeles. Well, there's no hope of that at all. If you like, we can bet on it, sweet sister of mine. Mm, well, I don't want to very much. But fine, I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> I bet. A hug and a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, that outfield, how far away from me tonight will my girlfriend sleep? Hundreds of meters outfield. But very close to a butcher's knife, put there to protect her from a would-be suitor who might creep up on her in the night and seduce her away from the man who wants to love her. <laughs> oh, Andrea, you don't give a guy a chance at all. Right. This has to be a clean game, Rodrigo. Yep. Besides, Maria de los Angeles is my best friend. And I wouldn't do anything against her, even for you. Now you know. It's a bet. But there are rules. You have to approach her like a real gentleman and with her with honor and integrity. Okay? I promise you. It's a deal. Mm. <laughs> hey. hey, Andrea, Andrea. Sometimes you're so naive about life. Not every fight can be won cleanly. Especially when it's over a woman like Maria de Los Angeles. Maria de Los Angeles will be mine. sad face. What's wrong with you? Oh, I can't stop thinking about how the nuns must be feeling. I think I've behaved really badly. Oh, come on now, Maria. This is the first night you spent away from the convent since I first met you. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. I shouldn't be looking for something that I already have. The sisters have taken good care of me. They're my real family. Well, is there anything I can do? No, I'm okay. Listen to me, Maria de Los Angeles. I think you've got it all wrong. You've got to realize you weren't a product of the Immaculate Conception and you're not a piece of public property. It's up to you to control your life. So what do I do if it all goes wrong and I fall flat on my face or end up facing a big sign that says Dead End Street? Just what do I do then? Do I just turn around and go back to the convent? Or do I pick myself up and hope that the next street will take me where I want to go? I think a charming prince will come and rescue you. And after that, you marry him and have a family. And live happily ever after. No, of course, I get to be the godmother. Hey, let's back up a little here, Andrea. I've only just met Rodrigo. We're not getting married. So does the idea appeal to you, or do you prefer Jorge de la Rosa? No way, you must be kidding. I don't like crazy guys, and he's insane. Besides, he's also a pain in the neck. I see. But from hate to love, it's just one tiny step. We'll see. But how you're not taken in by those eyes, I'll never know. I've got taste. Simple as that. I think you're mad, but if he's what you want, then good luck to you. Why, thank you. Let's go to sleep. I have to get up early. Oh, really? What time? Oh, uh, no offense, Andrea, but I don't want to hear about your honeymoon plans with her hair. Why do you early start? Oh, I have to go on a trip. Kind of an errand. Can you turn the lights off? <sighs> Sweet dreams, Andrea, full of little devils. <laughs> and may yours be filled with Rodrigo's, Maria. <laughs> Good night. Good night. This is the first time you've been on a trip, Maria, and I want you to be completely prepared. Now tell me, can you remember, what's the name of the airport? Uh, JFK? John F. Kennedy, correct. It's an incredibly big airport. Planes are taking off and landing almost constantly. Uh, now, Im immigration. When you go through, what are you going to tell the officer is your reason for visiting the U.S.? The purpose of your trip, hmm? You see? 
the truth that I'm a tourist. Oh, come on now, Maria. We've talked about this a dozen times. The purpose of your trip is for you to go and visit your mother. You're not just a tourist. I guess so. Right. She'll be there with a sign. But that won't be necessary. She'll recognize you. There's no doubt about that. Now, what else is there? Where are you staying? Didn't you say something like Queens? Queens. Queens. Queens, correct. Queens. Here. This is your passport and your visa. Okay. Ticket. This is your boarding pass, and this is your seat number. Can you see that? Okay. And one more thing. This is $1,500 for expenses. Don't worry about a thing. Your mother will take care of the rest. Thank you, Mr. Vladimir. I'll never forget what you've done for me. The only thing that I want you to do is enjoy that wonderful city. Mm. The capital of the world. It's a truly marvelous place. It's time to board. You better go. Yes. Okay. This is... Well, just in case you need a little bit of duty-free shopping before you go. Thank you, Mr. Vladimir. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon. Enjoy your trip. Oh, I will. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> She's gone. My daughter is gone. Her flight will depart soon. But will she be safe over there? It's such a great big city. There will be a group of nuns waiting there for her, Rosalinda. They will take care of her. Maria de Los Angeles is going to have a wonderful time. Don't you worry about a thing. <gasps> and each day I'll die a little. Because she went there looking for me, and I'm here, powerless to do anything at all for her. Oh, I can't tell you how useless I feel. I'm impotent. I don't know if I can bear it. Knowing I can't do anything at all. Oh, it's just not fair. Yes, we'd like to go straight through. It's a good thing Mr. Vladimir gave me money for a cab because I'm taking off. But not in a plane. It's back to Punta Lana for me. I don't know anyone in New York with the last name Hermoso. Sister Teresa told me that my mother was going to Punta Lana today. That's where Vladimir is. And that's where I'm going to find out the truth. It's time to find out why Mr. Vladimir lied. That's for sure. Hello there, darling. Hi. I've cooked up a little masterpiece. This stew is going to be delicious. Yes, sir. -y. Congratulations, sir. I'm impressed. Oh, well, you will be when you taste my handiwork. Linda, Christina, don't tell me you're wearing your brand new shoes while you're playing in the mud. I've only just bought those shoes. Sorry. Oh, come on now, my little baby. I told you you're too young to mix the mud. Come here, that's a job for grown-ups.
want to help Mama. Oh, I know, but you can't, Angel. Oh, no, look at my shoes. Oh, come on, we'll clean it up. Linda Cretina's a fool, Mama. Linda Cretina's an idiot. Hey, listen, Barley. My name is Linda Cristina, not Linda Cretina. Okay, that's enough out of both of you. Ulia Enrique and Linda Cristina, stop fighting now. I've heard enough nonsense for one morning. Why don't you both go and play, okay? Just stop all this arguing. Hi there. Good morning. How are you all doing? Morning. We're fine, thanks. Good morning there. Good morning. Can I inquire of you, young man, what is it that brings you to our humble home? I'm here looking for the man called Adan Espinosa, with the messed up behind. I hear that he's a coward. Got attacked running away from an animal. They say he was armed to the hilt with both a loaded rifle and a knife. But apparently he was scared of a little bitty forest pig. And a baby at that. That's very interesting. So, young man, can you tell me what is at the end of your little tale? Well, the little baby pig just destroyed the guy's rear end. Of course, because the man was a coward, he kept his back turned and wouldn't face the animal. <laughs> and when he needed treatment, since the old man knew nothing about herbs, he rubbed against a leaf that produces itching. He went crazy. They say he still can't stop scratching his behind today. <laughs> Not much longer now. Pretty soon we will know the result of the election. Uh-huh. I will make the announcement soon. I did everything as you ordered, Orchidia. The winner will be... <laughs> Mr. Vladimir Arabalo. You received the boxes with the ballots for him, right? Uh, of course. Of course. And everything was done just exactly as you said and ordered. <laughs> In a few minutes, I announce him as our new mayor. <laughs> and then I want you to tell me where we're going, so you can fulfill your part of the deal. There's a place close by. It's pretty. It's clean. You'll like it. It's classy. And above all, Orchidia, it's very discreet. Just make sure you do your part. Just make sure that Vladimir is the mayor of this town. You do your part, and I'll do mine. It will be a pleasure for both of us. You can count on that. So, young man, according to that story of yours, poor Adan Espinosa was completely destroyed by a little pig, right? Yes, it was just a baby pig. Very small. Well, go and find the man who told you that story and bring him right here. We'll fight to the death. You'll see we will fight to the death like men do. Because even if you see me here, practically an invalid on this wheeler, I am just as much a man as you. I'm certainly not a coward, that's for sure, young man. I'm more than a match for you. <laughs> now you're going to laugh in my face as well, huh? Adan, Adan, please. Can't you see this young man is having a little joke with you? Don't get so... Does this look like a circus show? Do I need a stranger to come here and laugh at me? Hey, I'm sorry. I'm Jorge de la Rosa. I was sent here by Carlos Andrade. I came from the border of Brazil and Colombia. And the reason I'm here is to bring you some herbs. I see. So you come here on behalf of Carlos Andrade? Are you telling me the truth, young man? Yes, sir. The one they call Parrot Face? Because apparently his nose is enormous. It's more than a foot long. <laughs> That's the one. He says they taught you herbalism. But apparently you're not very good at it. I've heard that you lost several patients lately. No. That's not true. And I know for a fact he didn't say that. And that's because everything he learned, he learned directly from me. And that's the truth. Hey, listen. Do you know anything about herbs, young man? Did he teach you? That's why I'm here. I've come to teach you some. I don't want your patients to keep dying. Oh, young man, that's enough that now. Please, please, don't this? provoke my husband. He has a very quick temper. This man is either an abuser or has a poor sense of humor. <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. I'm Francisca Salazar. Jorge de la Rosa. A pleasure. I've heard a lot about you. Yes, I'm sure that you have. Oh, no, not what you think. People with a good heart say that you're an angel from heaven. 
And they say the same about you. Yes? Yes, it's an honor for me to be here. I'm sorry about the joke. I was just having some fun. <laughs> That's enough. And let's not talk about that again, okay? And of course, you must have some of this stew. Thanks, I'd love to. That's settled, but we need to go and buy some vegetables for the stew. Listen, sweetie. <laughs> go and tell Julio I need him to run an errand, eh? I want you to go over to Rodencio's. Okay. When you get there, tell him two kilos of vegetables of all different kinds. And also, I'm going to need a half a kilo of assorted condiments. Now, can you remember all that? Yes? Yes. Okay. Can you give him some money to cover that, my You know love? I don't have any money, Adan. I gave you everything oh, I had. Oh, that's right. Maybe I could. No, no, that's all right. Hey, it's no problem, really. Here. But... <sighs> hey, Julio. Hey, you ready? Now then, Julio, go over there and buy what your father told you. And don't be too long about it, okay? You be careful and come back as quickly as you can. Yeah, you keep out of mischief. Straight home and no messing. Yeah, okay, Mom, I know. Take bye care. Bye. Come home as soon. fast as you can. Thanks a lot, Jorge. Please make yourself at home. Thank you. See thank you. you. What a woman. Uh, I thank God every day for sending that woman to me. <laughs> well, come on, let's be having you. Or are these herbs you mentioned? Didn't you say you brought me some herbs that Carlos Andrade had sent me? Yes. Well, I can't wait to see what they are because I've got everything here. Cat's teeth. But that's toxic. Ah, but not when you boil it in water. Then it's good for the heart. Really? Yes. <laughs> what else have you got? Uh, now let me see. Love leaf? Yeah, that's a diuretic. Three cups of tea a day. It's great for diabetics. Well, that's certainly a new one. Toco leaves? Hey, this stuff gives you diarrhea. Yeah, but boil it with mercury. The strength is diminished, then it's great for constipation. Uh, uh, all right. Hey, what are these? Just what are these little black balls good for? Those are made from ground rattlesnake. Basted with honey from the queen bee. They're to be chewed. Okay, Jorge, why on earth would you want to chew ground rattlesnake? What good does that do you? It cures toothache. It cures toothache? Mm-hmm. Now, I'll wager Carlos Andrade didn't teach you that one. So where did you learn that one? You're right, Adan. An Indian taught me about that one. I could never find him. But he could always find me. I used to call him Simon. Because that's the name the prisoners gave him. He gave me many names, but I never really knew what his real name was. He used to say that the wind kept everybody's name in special boxes and the bad spirits could open them and blow them away. He said that to have a name was really a way of limiting a man. He said that women could have names because the evil spirits never touch them. But it's different for a man. He told me that a man should never have a name that the wind could hear or understand. So that nobody or nothing could ever use your name. And that was why he wouldn't tell me his name. Mm. Sounds to me like that Indian was kind of crazy. <laughs> you, could, <laughs> you could call him crazy. But he could make you walk. What are you saying? Mr. Simon taught me to cure with herbs and to live with a learning mind. He showed me how if you live with a learning mind, you can do things normal people can't understand. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, I'm not Superman. I'm an adventurer who wants to be your friend. Then welcome, Jorge. It's my privilege to welcome you to the witches' club. Good witches, of course. No quacks allowed here. Don't want to know those crazy quacks. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome, Jorge.
Can we have some silence, please? Silence, please, ladies and gentlemen. Silence. Order, please. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all here today, and we will now start the ceremony and find out who is going to be the new mayor of Punta Lana. And at this time, I would now like to call on His Excellency, our distinguished mayor, Pedro Cifante, to announce for the first time the official result of our recent elections. Mr. Mayor. Good morning, citizens. It is now my pleasure to announce the official result. The final and official result for this morning's election, which is in this envelope, which will decide who will become the new mayor of Punta Lana. And the new mayor of Punta Lana is... Election with a majority of 1,675 votes is. is. is Mr. Ramez Basanta. completely betrayed me. It was all just a lie. But you did everything that you could. It wasn't your fault. Silence, please! Silence! Silence! There you have it, dear and respected citizens of Punta Lana. I give you Radames Basanta. Mr. Basanta. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> to all my fellow citizens of Punta Lana, I make you a solemn promise here today that Ira Damas Basanta from this moment on, we'll live only so that I can help you, my citizens. I can protect you. And I believe that together we can build a new and better life for tomorrow. Tell Mariana she has to pay me or you'll have to pay me. Okay, I'll tell her. Bye. Hey, Mr. Renzo, where's the bag of condiments my father? It's over there, kid. Go and get it. Can you see I'm busy? Okay, okay, keep your hair on. Hey, come back, kid. You didn't pay me. Stop the thief. Stop the thief. Uh. Please, miss, grab the boy. He's a thief. That's it. Uh, let hey, go. Alan, what's Leave the problem? Him alone. Leave him alone. Hey, they can't just sell something from my shop. What's what are we doing, Bob? Come on, Renzo. It's true, I'm sorry. He's a thief. He stole it. So do you want the police to put him in jail? He's only a little child. He just took something, officer. He needs to be punished. He must go to jail. You can't put him in jail. He's just a child. He hasn't done anything wrong. I'm his mother. Exactly. That explains it. What else do you expect from a prostitute but a thief for a son? Well, what are you waiting for? He committed a crime. There are witnesses. Arrest him. Now, wait a minute. You can't arrest him. He's only a little boy. Listen, Maria, please don't get involved. Francisca Salazar, also known as Foxy, is the best-known prostitute for miles around. She takes kids and teaches them how to steal. She's raising a bunch of delinquents. They're all criminals and they terrorize this town. Yeah, it's true. They're always stealing from me. They're always a pain in the ass. I don't understand the problem. We pay what's owed to you and that's it. I'm sure he didn't mean to do anything bad. No, I'm 
sorry, it's not that simple. This woman here is a disgrace to this town. She raises criminals. And these children, they're a menace and we need to finish this. I'm sorry. That's how it is. Understand? It's time to stop this. Respected citizens, as a faithful servant of democracy, in front of all of you here, I wish to offer my sincere congratulations to Mr. Radames Basanta. I swear I'm never going to forgive you. Shh. Don't you know this is politics? They're empty words. Just pretty empty words. And from this moment on, in spite of narrowly losing what turned out to be a very close race, I, a simple citizen of this town, promise to support him in every way I can. Because what really matters in the end is you, the people. That's all I wanted to say, my dear, dear friends. And so now, all that there is left to say is, good luck, Radames. Thank you, Vladimir Aravalo, for those beautiful and honest words. And now everybody, it is my great pleasure, it is my privilege to invite every one of you here to be my guest at a great party, where you, every one of my people, are the guests, guests of honor. It's on me. And the drinks are on me all night. So, my people, let's go! Just what is all this? What is going on? The kid stole from my shop. He's a thief. I just will not stop! It's not your decision, so shut up! You have no right to say anything. You're the one who told him how to steal. I insist, Mr. Orlando, that justice is done and that you do something. You must take measures against this woman and the delinquent she's raising. Rodrigo, I can't believe you think you have the right to treat people like this without... Please, excuse me, Maria. I am a gentleman, and I know this tramp's history much better than you do. You call her that name again and I'll break okay, your okay, neck! Right, you right, come back! Come on, come on right, now, everyone. Okay. Just come. Uh, Orlando! Uh, put that woman and child in jail! I insist upon it. That's about enough out of you. I'm the sheriff in this town. You are not. Do you understand that, Rodrigo? And I have decided not to arrest them. Francisca Salazar is a struggling woman. Don't you have the first idea about the trouble this lady has gone through? San Francisco Salazar is known by almost anyone in this town as Foxy. Now, I don't believe she got that name from being respectful and honest. Tell me I'm wrong. And the truth is, I don't understand why you refuse to do anything about her. You've done absolutely nothing! Don't you think these children deserve a better life than to be brought up to be criminals and thieves by a prostitute? Just what do you expect me to do? Send these children off to someone else to be taken care of? Do you really think that someone else would do a better job than Francisca? I don't think so. Where's your charity? What about some compassion for people in pain? Do you really think you can help them by humiliating them? By insulting them? No, I don't think so. It's outrageous. Well, I thought you were a kind man, but I've obviously made a mistake. I realize now I really don't know you. So, Maria, you think I'm not a good man because I'm concerned about his behavior. Well, I can't really argue with that. I admit that I would rather have him locked up out of harm's way. And if that makes me a bad man, then it's true. I am a bad man. But I'll tell you what's a whole lot worse. That's turning a blind eye to her and what she is doing as the moral guardian of these children. Right, you bastard! Hey! hey, hey, what are you hey, hey, hey. This is such a sad occasion. It was necessary. She's better off there. 
Maybe I should take off my robes to tell you what I want to say, Mrs. Rosalinda. You really have to stop hurting Maria with your lies. You must be careful with your words, sister. You're being unfair. But it's not me being unfair. It's you, Mrs. Rosalinda, denying Maria the truth about her life all these years. Truth that it's her right to know. Surely Maria has a right to know who her own mother is. Can you imagine how she feels? You haven't even come face to face with your own daughter. End the lies, even if it cost you your life. You've suffered for 20 years, but she's suffered her whole life because she just doesn't know why her mother is hiding from her. Why her mother won't come to her. And I don't want to be part of this lie. Please, sister. I can't believe you're saying this to me, Sister Margarita. Can you imagine all these sleepless nights that I've spent worrying and crying for my lovely daughter? And now you say this to me. How do you think I feel? It isn't fair. We've been a mother to Maria, given her everything. Everything that you couldn't give her despite all your money. And now I'm just asking you to please, please face the truth once and for all. You can't continue to build your life at the expense of Maria de Los Angeles. I can't stand it anymore. Oh, no, no, It's time no. to become a real woman and no. please stop hurting my little oh, girl. No. Stop. Come back, sister. Come back. Rosalinda, I will talk to her later. Please try and forgive her. No. No. I think she's right. All these years of hurting her, it must stop. It's got to stop. I'll tell her the truth. It's now time to put an end to this. Nobody will make me move until I know for certain that my daughter Maria is safe and sound and happy in New York. I won't move from here. That's it. I won't move. If you don't both calm down, I'm gonna keep all of you here for 840 prison hours, understand? I know what this is. Yes, you see, I know about you, Orlando. About your woman, Christina. Yes, that's right. Yes, I know all about her. About how she was brought up by the fox. I understand. I understand, Orlando, why you're abusing your authority in this way. You don't want to arrest your mother-in-law. Who are you to judge me, Rodrigo? You're not God. I pray that the saints may take pity on your hard heart and soul, because I will die of pain if my children are taken away from me. And you, Rodrigo, will have to keep praying and praying for redemption and forgiveness. And you will suffer a lot, because I guarantee that you will regret what you're doing to us, Rodrigo. Uh-huh. And who's going to reimburse me for everything that's been stolen from me? Tell me that, eh? Sir, I paid you already. And I didn't just reimburse you either. I paid you for more than he took. He made a mistake, but I'm not justifying him. But maybe one day your kids will also make a mistake. I promise you this won't happen again. Please be merciful and let us go. So what's your excuse, Mr. Pedro Cifante? According to the agreement we made, my husband Vladimir Arevalo was supposed to be the one to win the election for mayor of Punta Lana. Perhaps you don't remember. And now Radamus Basant has won. Can you explain how that happened? Orchidia, please, I swear, on all that is sacred, that I did exactly as you told me to do. I swear it. The ballot boxes arrived, just as you said, and I swapped them with the ones for Vladimir. I really don't know what went wrong. I swear, Orchidia, I'm just as surprised as you are. Are you telling me the truth? Yes, I swear. Perhaps I can provide you both with an explanation about what has come to pass here. Well, I know this beautiful woman, Orchidia, better than her poor dear mother ever did. You see, it so happens that Radamus Basanta is no fool. I was one step ahead of you. I knew what you were up to. You're not as clever as you think you are. 
Although I must say you are extremely beautiful. So I arranged for Benito Macera to intercept certain phony ballot boxes that Orchidia fraudulently requested you, Pedro Cervante, to exchange. What this means is that the result of the election is the proper legal one. All the votes that were counted were from the boxes I sent, the real ones. And yours, together with those nasty little thugs of yours, Astrobal and Juan, are in a ditch. I'm sure you'll find them soon. And now I've got only one more thing to say to you, Orchidia. If you had only thought to let things happen without interference, who knows, your husband might even have won the election. But legally, but alas, no. You had to try and be clever, didn't you? You went a bit too far. And you also forgot something very important. The man you were crossing was Radamus Basanta. And that a tiger attacks if you force him. Who can say? Perhaps it would have been better for you if you had lost this election. Because you are going to suffer some very hard times now. Because I will personally make sure that it is so, Radamus. These hard times? Hmm. Do you mean hard times like the ones you offered to him, Pedro Cefante, as a nice little reward for helping you commit this fraud? I didn't offer him anything. Really? Do you mean to say that there was no kiss of passion? No warm embraces? No promise of love? Do you really expect me to believe you, my dear Orchidia? That you really aren't a fool? That you aren't just a prostitute? <laughs> and that if Pedro Cefante helped you to arrange this election, so that your husband Vladimir would become the mayor. You weren't going to reward him with the oldest favor in the world? That is to say, with your body? I don't know what you're talking about. Who told you those lies? Pedro Cervante. I do believe he almost told everyone in this town just how much he was looking forward to taking you, my dear, to a hotel. The child stole. And he stole because he thought it was expected of him. And that is just not fair. And these children, how will they ever be able to thank God for the misery they live in? Maria de Los Angeles, I'm sorry. Sorry for wanting to end this, but I had to follow my conscience. Oh. Let's go home now, sweetheart. Don't you worry, it's all over now. I'll go with you. Let's go. Come on. You must understand that not everything is solved the hard way. Don't forget. Orchidia, when you're walking down the streets of this town, tell me, do the men of Punta Lana ask you for a kiss? Shut your mouth. Because now, after Pedro Cifante, I know there isn't a single man in this whole town who won't be waiting for a chance to go out with you. Did you hear, Radamis? I said shut up, unless you want me to kill myself. All right. I think I've said what I came to say. By the way, there's one more thing I wanted to say to you, Orchidia. I think now that as I'm the new mayor of this town, I 
Expect to be right at the top of your list. When you next decide to hand out some of your favors. mustn't believe a word he said. You've, you've got to believe me, please. I didn't say anything. I swear. No, please don't. <laughs> don't swear anything, you good-for-nothing fool. I have only one thing to say to you. In the morning, before you hear the first crow from the rooster, you'll stop being the rooster. <laughs> Before the rooster crows, I will stop being a rooster. Oh, God. What on earth does she mean? Tell me, who gave you all that you needed for Classroom 4? Tell me, who was the founder of the library of this school, stocking it with more than a thousand books, including a copy of the Encyclopedia Britannica? Wasn't it me? They were favors we will never forget. I regard information as a favor. And you have been hiding information from me, sister. What do you mean? Can you hurry up and get that inside? Many years ago, there was a Franciscan priest by the name of Zenon Mercado. And he brought a tiny newborn girl here. And the girl was named Maria de Los Angeles. <laughs> it's funny. By the very bizarrest of coincidences, a girl with that very same name came to my house. Even more of a coincidence, her last name's Hermoso. It's really quite a remarkable thing. That's the last name of my husband. I ask myself, what on earth could Sister Teresa be hiding from me so secretly and quietly? I don't like coincidences. And I don't like questions that have no answers. You see, they really insult my intelligence, and I find it disconcerting. I believe in a straightforward world, sister. In a world where white is white and black is black. In that we are alike. Because I don't see that there is anything mysterious. The name Hermoso is really a terribly common name. And as far as that young lady you mentioned is concerned, there's no secret. She was brought up here. In broad daylight, we certainly didn't hide her. At this very moment, she's traveling to New York. She's gone to meet her parents. They are very rich, and they travel a lot. And as for this Father Zenon Mercado, the truth is that I'm not a science fiction reader, and I most certainly don't know a Franciscan priest with that name. <laughs> oh, Mother. Ah, I do love people like you. Clear and lucid and so transparent. You remind me of a blue sky, the most beautiful, perfect blue sky, without even the hint of a cloud. I have to say, I'm no model of religious purity, and do you know lately there are all these naughty little devils whispering terrible things in my ear, actually suggesting that Maria de Los Angeles could be the baby that Rosalinda Vargas had in the woods 20 years ago. Those devils are gossips, huh? My God, how does she know? She knows everything. Oh, sister. I do love people like you. Clear and lucid and so transparent. You remind me of a blue sky, the most beautiful, perfect blue sky without even a hint of a cloud. I have to say I'm no model of religious purity. And do you know lately there are all these little naughty devils whispering terrible things in my ear. They actually suggested that Maria de Los Angeles could be the baby that Rosalinda Vargas had in the woods 20 years ago. Those devils are gossips. My God, how does she know? She knows everything. Do you know what's gonna happen to you here now? I'm gonna give you a big beating. I'm gonna make your tongue loosen up good and you're gonna tell me the whole truth because the money which is gone has to show up. Listen, Francisca. 
You get the whip. The one that is made from snakeskin. The one that you know works the best. The one that leaves a mark, but doesn't cut the skin. Mama, don't be a traitor. Don't, please don't give it to Papa. I want to cry. No, don't beat him up. No, don't Don't do it. It's not his fault. All right, all right, listen. Then you must tell me where you have put all the money which you know you took. Where is it? Mama, after my papa beats me up and I lie there dying, I'm going to give my things to Refugito. Julio Enrique, please tell your father the truth. Where is the money? Tell him the truth. Tell Come him. on, tell him. Hello. I beat you. And here's the truth. What is it? This oh. is a birthday cake. Very special. Wow, a cake. So happens that everybody <sighs> forgot that today is Francisca Salazar's birthday. Congratulations. Uh-huh. Everybody forgot except Enrique. He remembered his mother's birthday and took the money she gave him for the vegetables to buy his mother, this delicious chocolate birthday cake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember my birthday. It's so wonderful. Oh, love, you remembered your mother's birthday. Oh. Are you going to beat him up for that? No, love, no, no, of course not, no. You can't hit him now. Who says I'm going to hit my son for such a sweet thing? Even if it sounds stupid, Orchidia, I'm still confused. I don't know what you're saying. The matter of the last name Hermoso could mean my husband's hidden daughter, right? Which means this would make her an heiress. An heiress to what I have worked very hard for and what I fought for. But this is practically impossible. My husband, Vladimir, is so poor in spirit, he is not capable of betraying me. Then I don't see why you're worried about a girl who, at this moment, is on her way to meet her parents. She's embarking on a new life away from us. Who knows where she might end up? But who said I'm worried? I would be terribly worried if I had to come back here, because I found out you lied to me. Oh, my God. I would not like to face up to Orchidia Cordoba Estelante if she ever were to find out that she had been lied to for so very many years. Let's pray together, sister. Let's pray that moment never happens. Orchidia, my faith in God, my trust in Him, helps me not to fear your threats. Do you remember that Christians went into the Colosseums to fight lions? They had the greatest faith in God. But the lions didn't care. They ate them up just the same. Let's pray together. Let's pray, sister, for the lions not to attack. Now please bless me. May the Father bless you. Goodbye. She's a murderess. She set her heart on destroying her very own niece. Her own blood. Arcadia is a strange mixture between good and evil. I can't believe this. I also brought you a gift. Just hold on. Let me get it. Oh, God, this is too much. Here's my gift. No, you didn't have to. Of course I did. Here it is, but excuse me for not wrapping it better, but I didn't have enough money, but oh, Maria, the meaning what is what matters. Birthday. Here it is. Happy birthday. Oh. 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 Open it! Open it! Quiet, 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 quiet! It's beautiful! She has to be here because, Francisca, you're an extraordinary mother. And she is the mother of all mothers. <laughs> I... I appreciate this very much, but... But I... I... I don't deserve this. I, What's wrong, Mama? She's the mother of God and I don't deserve... I, I don't deserve her. I can't. I'm not worthy of her. I never I know. Mama. Did I do something to offend her? 
But why? It's a very, very long story, dear. Francisca, the poor woman, has been suffering for years for the past. And she believes she has no forgiveness. She thinks she has no right to life. It's not your fault. It's not her fault either. It's life, which has been very hard and basically still is for all of us. She's a great person, a wonderful woman, Mr. Dan. That's true. And I would kill any person who dared to disagree with that. But she doesn't know it. Or doesn't want to know it. Her past has really destroyed her away. You know, she became a prostitute for me. To help a poor invalid to take care of. To have as many children. I'm the one who should feel self-disgust and shame to look at the virgin's face. Listen, Jorge. And you too, Maria de Los Angeles. I will kill. I will kill whoever offends her. I will kill, I swear I'll kill him! Very bad at your home the other night. I let my anger take me over and I was disrespectful to your generous kindness. I really apologize, Mr. Radamus. I had absolutely no right to behave in that way. Don't worry, Rodrigo. I'm not that type who will ever hold grudges. And you're not too much of a prophet, huh? <laughs> your father lost the election, yes. Nevertheless, again, I make you the very same proposition. I would like you to become the general secretary. What do you say? What I can say is that you truly surprised me, and you just gave me a generosity lesson. Give me a couple of days to think about it, huh? Tell me, Evaristo. Why didn't you ever go and finish that portrait? Hector died very young. And I don't have the heart to really finish it. Whenever I try, I end up crying like a baby. Hey, your alcohol level is very high today. What's going on with you, Vladimir? Are you hurt over not winning the election? What hurts me is my honor. Mm. And believe me, believe me, that has nothing to do with the election. Nothing at all. No. I'm a gentleman. And I can admit my failure and my loss. What? What is killing me? What is destroying me inside is Orchidia. Orchidia. My wife. The only woman I've ever loved and will ever love. All my life. Well, that's settled then, so give me a drink, Vladimir. I will join you in drowning all the sorrow in your heart. Very well. We all know that our town of Punta Lana has many, many problems. And you know I'm not here to tire you with the list. I'll overcome them, one at a time as they come up. One by one, I will conquer them all. There is one problem I do want to tell you about. 
And I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the richest businessmen of Punta Lana are here, and the most beautiful women also. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to make the following proposition. Pay for a kiss of the woman of their choice, and have these lovely women accept all the proposals. And the reason for this is for all of us to save Punta Lana's emergency medical center, which we all know is in ruins now. <laughs> attention, attention, let's hear from that gentleman. I'm willing to pay any amount for a kiss from that brunette over there. On the cheek. Any more bidders? Well, you'll have to come up with a lot more than me. And me too. Well, as you can see, everyone is willing to participate and collaborate in this. Well, gentlemen, take out your wallets. Ladies, get ready to collaborate. Together, we are going to save Punta Lana's Emergency Medical Center. Yes or no? Yes! Thank you. Ever is though. Orchidia is a very strange woman, you know? Mm -hmm. But she's a great woman, I would say. Yes. But she lives in a weird world of hate and revenge and ghosts. Vladimir, is there something, some sort of secret about Orchidia? That you haven't told me yet. Am I right? Do you remember? Remember Hector Cordoba's daughter? The baby you took 20 years ago. 20 years ago to the convent where my niece lives. Mm. Maria de Los Angeles. Evaristo, that darn girl is fixated on finding out who her mother is. And she has absolutely no idea of the danger that she is getting into. If Orchidia is able to identify her, she will erase her. Yes, but there's something. Vladimir, not everything that appears is. I'm gonna show you something. Give it as though she's determined. Determined to find out who are her mother and father. Imagine if I had to get her out of the country. I sent her to New York. To protect her. I lied to her. I told her that if she looked, she would find her mother in that city. You sent her to New York, you said? I'm sure she is probably walking around the Big Apple by now. You've got to be joking, Vladimir. I just saw her. What are you saying? Listen, Evaristo, are you sure of what you're saying? Absolutely, as sure as can be. Oh, my God. Well, that girl was going to gain by going to New York, or Maria de Los Angeles, and Orchidia. If Orchidia finds out, don't you see? Don't you see? Nothing, nothing, nothing is going to happen here. Listen, if Orchidia finds out the document is in existence, nothing will happen. What's more, I think she will agree to and be happy if Maria de Los Angeles marries your son, Rodrigo, and keeps it all in the family. What, what are you talking about? See, if the alcohol allows you to see things clearly, I want you to read this document. Read it. Read it. Oh. Orchidia doesn't even own half the land. I mean, it's unbelievable, but it's written here in black and white. She doesn't own half. You know why? Because Hector, in turn, left the distillery to Rosalinda Vargas the mother of Maria de Los Angeles. There's a clause here that states 
You know, it's as Sherlock Holmes would have said. Elementary stuff, my dear Watson. It's that clause there. That clause is life insurance for Maria de Los Angeles. It says here... Oh, Rosalinda. Rosalinda Vargas is the true owner. As long as she never marries again. But she has married again. Oh, don't you understand? It means that all that enormous land where the distillery is on, the whole thing, belongs in its entirety to Maria de Los Angeles, the daughter of Hector and Rosalinda. <laughs> of course! Rosalinda Vargas married Radames Basanta. This immediately makes Maria de Los Angeles Cordoba Vargas. The legitimate owner of the rum distillery and of all the enormous fortune which that land and everything else brings. Look here! <laughs> well, the problem is that Maria de Los Angeles doesn't know it. And the most dangerous part is Orchidia doesn't either. <laughs> now I understand. Pour some for me, brother. So that's why you said that Orchidia will want to marry my son Rodrigo to Maria de los Angeles. <laughs> you know, it's worth a lot more than killing her. <laughs> Not so. Listen carefully. Mm -hmm. One is never sure of the reaction of Orchidia. I want to have more bids. I want to have more bids here. Over here. 150,000 bolivars for a warm kiss from Andrea Cordoba Aravalo. 150,000 bolivars. Okay. And I offer the same for Alba Basanta. I offer 350,000 for Maria de Los Angeles. And I offer 400,000 for the brunette. 450,000 bolivars. Good, very good. Any more offers now? Come on now. I want some more offers here. More offers from people. Yes, what, 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 what? Half a million for Maria de Los Angeles. 550. 550,000. I will offer 600,000 for a kiss from the beautiful brunette. Everyone be quiet. I offer a minimum of 700,000 bolivars for this lady I have in front of me. Orquidia Cordoba Escalante. And I will offer a minimum of 800,000 bolivars for a kiss from Orquidia Cordoba Escalante. shares with Radames Pesante were so high. <laughs> He's only doing it to bother me. What's wrong with you, gentlemen? No more offers? Right then. Attention, attention. If there are no more offers, let's go for it. And one. One. And two. 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 And three. three. Okay. okay, all the ladies, please be so kind as to come up onto the stage. The winning gentlemen, the same. Hmm? Come on. <laughs> Mrs. Orchidia Cordoba Escalante and daughter, please. Okay. Very well. Come up. Very well, Benito. Please. Now let me have those sheets of paper. Okay. Very well, very well, very well, very well. Bear with me, please. And here we have the total amount, 1,700,000 bolivars! This amount is not the total amount needed to bring our medical center to perfection, but something is something, and we've made a start. A very good beginning. Thanks to the collaboration of the citizens of Punta Lana, we will make our medical center work. Work and work for our people, which means all of you! Okay, now to action. Let's see, okay? Very well. The first is Mr. Rodrigo. You're the winner. 
You paid five hundred and fifty thousand for a kiss from Maria de los wait, Angeles. Wait, wait a minute. I paid six hundred thousand. I'm the winner, right? Oh, really? Let me check here. Yes, yes. That's right. Mr. Jorge de la Rosa is the winner with Maria de los Angeles. The kiss will be on the cheek. There's no way I'm being kissed on the lips. Oh, oh, no, no, way. Way. no way! No way! Yes, no. Lips, 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 lips. On the lips. lips. You heard them. Yes. 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 I insist that it's on the cheek and not Come on. The she said she wants it on the cheek. So don't what? bother her anymore. Don't meddle in this. You lost. Ah. Move over. Oh. Rodrigo. Rodrigo. I paid for a kiss on the lips, and I'm getting a kiss on the lips. Yes! yes. On the lips! On the lips? Yes! yes on. Now listen. He won't kiss me on the lips because I said from the start that the kiss would be on the That's cheek. That's cheating. I never heard on the cheek. I pay for a kiss on the lips. It has to be on the lips. What do you all think? Yeah, In this okay. case, well, I cannot be the judge. It'd be like Pontius Pilate. I wash my hands. You two solve your problems up there, huh? Come on. No way. No way. Come on. Come on. Let's see what she has to say. Let's see what she has to Wait say. All right. Let her speak. Wait a moment. Come on. Let her speak. Rodrigo offered 550,000 for a kiss for me, right? Yeah, and I right. offered 600,000. I'm the winner. Mm, yeah, he did. He did, yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Huh. Tell me, Mr. Adamas, this is a gold chain. It was a present from my mother. How much, in your opinion, do you think it's worth? Well, just by looking at it from here, I'd say close to 700,000 bolivars. Well, added to what Mr. Rodrigo Arevalo offered, and it raises what this man offered. Do you agree, Rodrigo? But of course. And you, Mr. Adamas? My chain, his check, and he's the winner. Is that all right? Well, what's all right to me is that the medical center gets what it needs from everybody's help. There's a change, everyone. Listen, there's been a change. Everybody listen. The winner of the kiss on the cheek from Maria de Los Angeles Hermoso is Rodrigo Arevalo Caballero. One moment, one moment, one moment. This is cheating, right? No, sir, this is perfectly legal. And if you must kiss so badly, just go kiss a cow. Get lost. <laughs> beat you out there. <laughs> if I remember correctly, you told me that you registered that baby in the registry office with the name Maria de Los Angeles Cordoba Vargas. Exactly. Because that's her real name. <laughs> that's the one that counts, Evaristo. Oh. For her documents or her inheritance. But then, she is known as... The name of Maria de Los Angeles, Hermoso. <laughs> that's because that's the name that is on her baptismal certificate. But the real one, the one with the value, is the one registered with the registry office. Maria de Los Angeles, Cordoba Vargas. Here's a question, or should I say a statement. The girl seems to have quite a compelling last name. With that last name, <laughs> and with this document you've given me, Orchidia Cordoba will have to admit that the only and absolute owner of everything is Maria, Maria de, de Los, Los Angeles, Angeles Cordoba Vargas. Vargas. Just as I registered her. And that's the only name that will ever count. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> I won the honor of kissing the woman in red. That is Mrs. Orchidia Cordoba Escalante. 
for 800,000. And I'm going to collect my prize right now. It's only fair that you get to kiss her on the lips because you paid 800,000. On the oh. lips! See, I paid 800,000 bolivars to kiss the mother. But somehow, I prefer to kiss the daughter who is less advanced in years and doesn't sell her favors. <laughs> I've collected what I paid for, and here's my check! Hey, Mr. Adamus, you're great! You got the check instead! <laughs> Dad, he's a real lady killer! <laughs> the thing is, when a lady only provokes in me the desire to ask for her blessing, then I don't like her anymore. <laughs> well, gentlemen, come on up! Oh no, they're already here. Collect your kisses, all of you, please, and let the party go on! Let the party go on! In Punta Lada, the party never stops. The citizens are happy, the joyous, because Radamas Basante Yanez, the one-handed Basante, is your mayor. It's a beautiful night, right? Yes, but it's not more beautiful than the twinkling star that just sat down next to me. Thank you, my sweet love. You say beautiful things to me and make my sour life sweet. That's why I love you so very much. Come much closer to me a moment, my love. Come here. sad about life, my sweet darling. Let's talk about some other things tonight. When you get sad, you get sick. And I don't want that to happen to you. True. Mm. What do you want to say? Mm. There's something that for some time now just never seems to stop going round and round in my head. Uh -huh. And what is it? It's that young man, Jorge de la Rosa. What about him? Haven't you noticed the watch that he carries around with him hanging on a chain? Yes. It's the very same watch that Giacomo Palermo had. Do you remember it? Of course I do. And the young man's name is Jorge. The very same name as the child that Basanta took from here and gave away to Giacomo. Yes, that's right. So in that case, if it is the same person, then the way we can check is if we can ask him if he knows Giacomo Palermo. And if it is the same person, are you gonna tell him the story about what you know about him? Never. You know, the fact is he has a right to know everything. Happiness has more right to triumph. He has that right. Tell me why you didn't make an offer for me. 
Any woman would feel offended, me included. Albra, I didn't dare try because I don't have enough money to pay for your kisses. You're more beautiful than anyone. <sighs> Sweet words, Rodrigo, but they're kind of a lie. And they don't totally comfort my heart. Mama, can you tell me? Are you interested in Radames Basanta? Who, me? Oh, God, please. Never. First, because I'm a married woman. And second, because that man is a womanizer. I would never set eyes on a man like that, see? <laughs> but he must think differently. He looks at you a lot. Oh, God. I've seen uh -huh. him looking at you. He's always staring in your direction. Mama, let's be honest here, OK? He paid 800,000 for a kiss from you. Not a kiss from me, and I figure he only did it to bother you. <laughs> you think so? Mm-hmm. Do you really think so? Mm-hmm. But he is always trying his best to make me look ridiculous in front of everybody, a total fool. I am going to make him suffer. I am going to make him cry his eyes out. I really am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shouldn't you be in New York City by now? How do you know I was going to New York? Because I asked. I talked with Sister Teresa. And the truth is, I'm very interested in knowing what you talked to my husband Vladimir about. The Hermoso last name is more than a bit of a mystery. And naturally, I would want to know who you are. I also want to know who I am. That's why I came back. I don't know anything about me about my family, about my mother. I don't know who my mother is. But I'm sure that the mystery of my life is here. Really sure. Now, if you please excuse me, I have children with me and I have to take them home. Goodbye. Of course. She's not lying. She's telling the truth. But that makes her much more mysterious to me. Come on, kids. Let's go get my purse. We're leaving the party. Mm, no, just a little bit more, please. No, that's enough now. It's getting late. We have I'll to go. go. She has someone to take her. Let's go. Bye. Bye. Behave yourselves. Bye. Bye. The enemy here is Maria de Los Angeles. I can't wait for the moment that I take her eyes out. As I lay me down to sleep, as I lay me down to sleep, I pray to the Lord, I pray, I pray to the Lord, my soul to keep so if I should die, my soul to keep so if I should die. Before I wake, I pray to the Lord, before I wake, I pray to the Lord, I pray to the Lord, my soul that he should take, I pray to the Lord, my soul that he should take. And so, in the name, in the name of, of the Father, and, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. <laughs> okay. Good night, Good night, children. Good night. Good After sleep. Good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. <laughs> That's it. Good night. And you. Good night. Good night, <laughs> Good night darling. Sleep well. And you. Good night, Mama. Good night. <laughs> Okay, I'll only walk with you this far. I really don't want to have anything to do with these people. Not because of you, really. Remember, our invitation is still open. Please stay at our house whenever you like. Thank you. But I already told the children and Francisca that I would spend the night here with them. All right. Good night, Rodrigo. Good night. Thanks a lot for bringing me. You're welcome. <laughs> Come on, come on, kids, let's go. Come on. Qué bonitos ojos tiene. Ellos me quieren mirar, pero si tú no los dejas, 
Pero si tú no los dejas, ni siquiera parpadear. Who told you you could sing? Even at a masquerade party, you'd sound like a howling dog. Malagueña salerosa. Eres linda y hechicera. Eres linda y hechicera. Como el candor de una rosa. Did you tell this man to sing? Somehow he thinks he can. Oh, Maria, this serenade's for you. For me? Oh, no, Jinx, let him go somewhere else to sing. Let's go in, it's too late. Good night, children. Good night. Sleep well. Malagay. Oh, dear. I don't think she liked the song. But I will keep singing. After all, he who persists wins. Salerosa, eres linda y hechicera, eres linda y hechicera, como el candor de una rosa. Inmenso, inmenso como el agua del mar. Inmenso, inmenso como el agua del mar. Francisca, hurry, tell me which of the two men am I going to marry? Oh, Maria, it says that you're going to marry the one you love the most. Oh, God, don't tell me I'm going to marry that insane man who keeps singing. Well, I, I can't see a face or anything. But one of them, he is going to lie to you. And you're going to believe it, that it's true. But the other man, is going to tell you the truth, and you will think it's a lie. The first one must be the voodoo man. He must be the liar. Oh, Mrs. Francisca, find a way to get rid of him. I can't stand him. I can't. Mr. Adan, please, will you ask him to stop singing? He's driving me crazy with that awful voice of his. He's going to drive me insane. No! I can't say anything to him. Really? No! He's not on your property? No! He's not on my property. The branch that he's sitting on is outside of... It's all way beyond my jurisdiction. Outside of my parcel. Outside of my property. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. If you have a look, you'll see. He's just sitting just a tiny bit over the frontier. Where that young man is sitting over there. That is not my property. You see, it's not. Besides, singing is free, huh? Oh, singing is free. Yes. I'm going to turn off that radio. What are you going to do, Maria? What are you doing? What are you doing with that pot of water? Wait until the water boils and you'll see. Do you mean you're going to cook him for dinner? I'm going to make his voice more hoarse than gravel. By the way, Benito, tell me how are things proceeding with the sale now? You mean tomorrow's sale? That's all been taken care of, boss. Really? Are you sure? All set. Good. Don't worry, sir. It's all been confirmed. I'm going to have some very important people over here. Mm, it's very good. I really need to sell the hacienda. I need the money. And its sale represents more than several million. Adamas, you know, it's a terrible shame that you have to sell the hacienda. It's one of the most beautiful around. Yes, believe me, it hurts me too, Benito. But I'm in need of the money. You see, I need to recover all the money that I put up for the construction of a bunch of buildings in Caracas. And in fact, a way to complete the agreement is to sell the hacienda. That's why I want everything to work out perfectly well. We both have to do our utmost. Don't worry about it. I can guarantee you that all your buyers and all your guests will be treated as kings. We've even arranged for flamenco dancers and for the best bullfighters to put on a tremendous show that is going to impress everybody. Mm. Listen, when the party is over, Rodamus, you will have sold your place. And you will have all the money you need to finish the buildings in Caracas. Radamus Basanta has never gone back on his word yet, Benito. And this will surely not be the first time. He can't even sing a lullaby. I good. Now may he suffer.
How are you, Maria? Fine, fine. You're ready to go? Yes, of course I am. Uh, uh, excuse me, be back in a while. Sure thing. Sure. Well, look at that. It's my guess that Rodrigo won this round. Well, that's okay. Because Maria's going to end up with Jorge. Yes? Mm -hmm. And why do you say that? Do you see the future? No. It's simple when I bet on my son. You don't say. Is that so? Rodrigo's not also your son as well. Ah, you listen to me, Rosalinda. If you take so many sedatives, you're going to end up sick. Ailia, can't you just see? Maria de Los Angeles didn't go to New York City. She's around here as if nothing happened. Are you really sure of that, Rosalinda? Of course I am. It was Albert Griselda that saw her. She was running around the town as if absolutely nothing was going on. Ah, that's a strange hand of destiny. Destiny is telling us we need to change plans. So if she didn't leave, she didn't leave. Hand of destiny? I only know that my destiny has been twisted since that woman dared cross my path. My path to joy and happiness. Do you know, that's why I had to give up my daughter all those years ago, having her near me. I don't know, Ailia, I don't know. I don't know anymore what to do. The only thing I know is that I'm desperate. Look, desperation can't take you anywhere. Orchidia Cordoba Escalante thinks like the devil itself, and we need to stay one step ahead of her. I learned that small fact too late. When my daughter, our senior, had already perished. After the fire where she burned with that murderous monster of a man, Teofilo. Twenty years have passed, and life has taught me that to defeat Orchidia Cordoba, we have to try and put ourselves in her shoes and philosophy. It needs an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth, and a plan. So we murder that damn snake, crush her dead through the head. I think we should be getting back. It is really kind of late, don't you think? Late? It could be too late for me if I don't start understanding what I'm beginning to feel for you. And only you can put a name to what these feelings really are. I don't know Maria de Los Angeles. I only know your eyes, your enchantment, and the deep sadness behind your innocent childish smile. I close my eyes and I ask myself the same questions a thousand times. What should I call this feeling growing inside of me? Could it be some terrible fear? Fear to be the child I once was who made up impossible love stories. The child who would return again and again to the cinema to fall in love again with a beautiful girl up there on the screen. And dream that it was my lips that kissed hers. Or could it be that I'm dreaming? Or can I truly say that I am 